But right now, though, we're very pleased to be joined by former Major League Baseball player, World Series winner with the 97 Marlins, a homegrown player with your Montreal Expos back in the 90s, had two stints here in this city, and it's currently a pre- and post-game analyst on Fox Sports Florida for Marlins Live. You can also follow him on Twitter.com slash Sleepy30. It is none other than Cliff Floyd. Hey, Cliff, how you doing? What's going on, Matthew? How you feeling, man? I'm good. Thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight. Really appreciate your time today. No doubt, man. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be on. And uh, to all my Montreal people's man, you know, just just saying what's up, and uh, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've been in that city. What a great place. But I miss it. I miss it dearly. So. Well, we we saw you certainly at that uh, very small gathering honoring the 94 Expos in uh, 2011. Yeah. Uh, that was probably the first time you'd been back in the city in uh, several years. Uh, nice to be back uh, then? Oh, yeah, it was definitely nice to be back. Uh, well, welcome. Everybody was cool. Everybody was uh, very happy. It, it was actually... Uh, you know, some some you can always hold on to fond memories to always have when you when you think about a place that that thrived on baseball and thrived. You know, Olympic Stadium was always hyped back in the days when we were as hot as a team. And you know, it, you know the the the, the one you know I, I guess his claim to fame Matthew is 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 uh you know the '94 team that we had that was so good. And you look at and you always envy of of guys like Derek Jeter. And these guys that got an opportunity to win and sort of build a dynasty. When you felt like that Montreal team that we had assembled in '94 uh, was was built to be a dynasty before the strike in '94, and then of course it's just Madeline. But it's you know I guess there's still fond memories of, of of a great team before the strike. Cliff, you may have the most unique perspective on the Montreal situation than maybe anybody in the world. You're a guy who came up when the farm system was at its peak, obviously. You played on that 94 team. You went through the strike. Then you go to the Marlins. Uh, you come back in, in 2002 when the team is owned by Major League Baseball. Uh, then now you're working with the Marlins and, and you know a, a loose association with Jeffrey Loria. I mean, this is this is kind of just you know surreal the experience you have with you know obviously you know how how people feel about that guy here in the city. So just yeah. a, a unique perspective you have. Yeah, it definitely is. You know, like you said, coming through the system and having a great you know uh, minor league system coming up and and looking forward to so many good things in the city of Montreal when when they was looking for a winner and, you know, it, it felt so minimum at the time of, of what the problem was. And the problem, in my opinion, was, you know, you move the stadium down, you know, in downtown, uh, you know, it was, it was a long drive out to Olympic stadium. Uh, you know, you, you, you do exactly what the Montreal Canadians did was built the stadium right there to sell out. People come from work, you go to the game, you enjoy yourself, you go grab, you know, Gibson's or, 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 or whatever, you know, down, you know, on, on St. Laurent and, and St. Catherine, you go grab a bite and you enjoy yourself. And that was a that was a great night. You get home, 11.30, I mean, you know, around 11.30, you're good. That's growing up and, and understanding how simple it, it, it could have been to have that stadium situation solidified. Put it downtown, you bring in fans, we have a great team, the system coming through, you can sort of go full circle. You, you can, you, you know, you can... You can go through the system. You can replenish it when you need to. You can you can let go of some of the stars we had, and then bring these guys. You know, Rondell White and and uh, uh, who who do we have coming through? Shane Andrews and Michael Harges and all these guys. You can just you know you just bring them through, and then you 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 play and see what happens in '94. It all goes down here after that. It goes it comes full circle again. I, I, I come back, I, I go to Boston, I leave, and then I end up working for the Marlins and Jeffrey Lawrence is, is, is the owner. And we talk about it, believe it or not. We talk about the teams that Montreal had in the city and he wishes things were different, but of course, you know, I mean as a businessman, some things you just can't control. Cliff Floyd joining us here on Game Points with Matthew Ross. Cliff, uh, I'm, I'm affiliated with um, a, a, a Facebook fan page called Expos Nation, 154,000 fans. We um, we opened it up for questions uh, to you, and so I'm going to read a, f- a few of the questions for you from some of the fans. 
Okay. All right. So uh, this uh, question coming in from Pat Godreau. He says, thanks for taking the time to talk to Montreal fans. Cliff, you were my, my favorite player in the 90s. Best memory as an expo, that home run against the Braves and Greg Maddox in 94. So that was in late June of 1994. Kind of almost, you know, had there been no strike, it was maybe a defining moment, shall we say, of, uh, I guess, Montreal maybe uh, getting over the hump and, and, and taking out Atlanta because obviously uh, you were ahead of them when the strike uh, finished. I, I'll never forget that moment. It was one of those moments that sort of put a mark on our season of what we was out to accomplish, and we knew who was in our way. And to get to where we wanted to get to uh, in, in, in 94 was to go through the Braves. We knew that. We was battling. Um, you know, we knew the Marlins was right there. They were coming. Uh, it, 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 was, it was just one of those things. The Mets were right there. It was a close division. It was a tough division at the time. You know, you, you, you remember like it was yesterday because it was such a big part of your career. I mean, you always remember the good times. You, you, are, you very seldom remember the bad times, even though they stayed there. But it, it was one of those times that, you know, it was a, it was a, it was the sort of defining moment, as you said, in my career because it was a big home run off one of the best pitches in the game and it gave us an advantage moving forward that we could beat these guys. All right. Uh, another uh, question coming in from uh, from the fan page. Uh, who had the most? This comes from Norman Lemieux. Who had the most influence or inspired you the most in your MLB career? A teammate, coach, etc. Yeah, you know, Tommy Hopper was my first instructor with the Montreal Expos, and he taught not just me, but Rhonda White and so many others how to to be professionals. And, it, and it's a difference between. Being a professional and just being a player. And for me, being a professional takes you to another level. That level being how you handle yourself, how much work you put in, how do you put yourself in a position that sort of separates you from the others. And if you can do that, that's how you prolong your career and become a professional. He was just a man. He just allowed us to, to get into a flow, man, and understand the importance of putting in hard work. And once you once you get a hold of, of, of the, the, the game – and understand how much work is needed, and to learn something new every day, then then you then, then you can continue to grow. That it, it's about growing. That's all. That's that's the one thing I've learned from the game and 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 from you know guys who've been around a long time is how do you grow from year to year? And you know Tommy Harper was was great at teaching guys how to do that. And I think you know you need guys like Tommy Harper to help you. To, to, to get to that next level. And, um, you know, the guys on the team were great. But, you know, coming from a guy that's been around forever, uh, Tommy Hopper, he, he, he was my dude. Cliff, this comes in from Jerry Del Guercio. Who was your, uh, what was your favorite position? Was it first base or left field or outfield in general? Yeah, you know, I love playing first base because you, you always felt like you was in the game. But, you know, mine my, my was, was, was the outfield because, you know, it, it, it allowed you to – you know, there's a lot of communication involved. It allowed you to to make get you know to uh, you know game saving catches and 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 a lot of it was just so you know I I felt like I wasn't a great defender and at first base. It was a you was always in the game, of course, but you, you know because first base is a big part of the infield because you're always in the play. But the outfield to me was something I want to work on that I want to get better, at. and I felt myself getting better day by day and. uh you know, I didn't feel comfortable at first base after I broke my wrist in '94, and then once I got a chance to play the outfield, things came to be a little bit better. And um, you know, it just was something that it, it, I, it grew on me, and, and I felt comfortable, each, you know, sort of each and every year. So um, I would say the outfield for sure. Did that uh, injury to your wrist affect you moving forward with your career in terms of uh, what you were able to do at all? You know, I, it, it affected me not as much as I thought it was going to affect me. I think, you know, when I look back on it, you know, I'll be, me being a left-handed hitter, uh, it was my top hand on the bat. I think it would have affected me more if I was a right-hand hitter because it would have been my bottom hand. But, you know, it, it was something that, that allowed me to really appreciate the game after that. You know, it's always it's always unfortunate it has to take something that drastic, but <laughs> yeah, I came back from it. And it was one of those things that it was just, you know, it was a little blimp you know, on the radar for me. And I just felt like if I could get through this, I could get through anything in my career. And once I get through that and get back on the field, 
um, I knew that I was going to pretty much have a long career because I was going to put the effort in to make sure that happened.